is prayer time in the temple, and we're going to have prayer to begin our message today, and that will be followed by our scripture reading. Let us all bow our heads and let us pray as we call upon the name of our God. Father God, we thank you for another day of life that you have given to all of us. We thank you for the strength that you have given us to be able to travel over the highway and to meet here in the house of God. And I thank you for allowing us to do our live streaming today because the weather report said that we might not be able to do that. But I thank God that we are able I pray that you will remember each one of the families, individually and collectively, that tune in today. Those that are sick, I pray for their healing and deliverance. Those that are cast down, I pray that they will be lifted up. Those that are burdened, I pray that you will take the burdens away. Bless the words of your servant today as we preach and teach God's word and let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Bless the words and bless the message today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We ask you now to grab your Bibles, and I hope you brought your Bible or you have your Bible close by so you can read along with us in the word of the Lord. We're going to go to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 3, and we want to read there verses 13 through 18. That's 2 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 13 through 18. We will begin, and we would like for you to read along with us as we read the word of the Lord. Verse 13 said, And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is still upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to reading and hearing of his word. Out of those verses that we have read, we want to choose 2 Corinthians 3.18 for our Sunday scripture text. And it reads, But we all, with open face, beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord, and are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as the Spirit of the Lord. Our subject for today is making a change for the better. Making a change for the better. We have entered into a new year on the calendar 2021, or 20 and 21. And each time that we uh, change a year, or we leave one year and go into the other year, uh, we like 
we are here at Zion uh, Temple First Pentecostal Church like to try to prepare ourselves spiritually for what we will face in this year. We like to look at ourselves, and I believe everybody should have a spiritual examination of themselves before God, before they want to tackle the things that are going to happen in the new year. And we should not measure ourselves by other human beings. I'm doing good, I'm doing well. I'm doing better than X or Y or Z. But we should look at ourselves and see where we stand with God. Second Corinthians 13 and 5 said, examine yourself and see whether you be in the faith. We should examine ourselves according to the word of God, such as holiness and righteousness. Every year we should live a saved life for the Lord and should make our relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ even greater than what it was the year before. And there should be a change for the better in all of our lives. Now, when we say that, most people think it's talking about a greater prosperity. I should have more money. I should have a better job. I should have, amen, the things that I wanted in 2020. I should get those things in 20 and 21. But this message is not talking about prosperity, where you're going to get a whole bunch of things that you've been wanting Amen, for the last 12 months, but this is, hallelujah, looking at ourselves and see where we are with the Lord. We should always want to be changed and made better, and there are always things that we can't improve upon. Well, I did pretty good last year, but we want to do better this year. Hallelujah. We should always be changed and made more like Jesus, hallelujah. We should grow toward spiritual maturity. And if you've been saved for a long time, you should be changed, <laughs> hallelujah. If you've been in the way for a long time, you should be changed. If you've had the Holy Ghost for a long time, you should be changed year by year, amen, and made better, hallelujah. We're going to look today at spiritual maturity, hallelujah, and we believe that 20 and 21 is a time to make a change for the better, hallelujah. Making changes in our life, amen, is called transformation, Hallelujah. The word transformation means to change the form or appearance of, and it also means to change the condition, the nature, and the function of. Hallelujah. The doctrine or the teaching of transformation is found in the Bible. This is not a psychological, philosophical lesson, but Transformation is a doctrine or teaching that is found in the Bible. Hallelujah. And there are three stages of transformation that every human being will go through or will have to go through and pass successfully before they will be able to stand before the eternal God yeah, hallelujah, in righteousness and in peace, hallelujah. There are three stages of transformation. Stage one of transformation is, amen, the new spiritual birth, hallelujah. The new spiritual birth. People must be changed from 
sinners into saints, and they must be changed from unsaved to saved, and they must be changed into the sons of God and the children of God. Whatever way we are when we are born into the world, that must be changed. We said, the Bible said we were sent, chosen or conceived in sin and shaping in iniquity. Hallelujah. And Romans 3 and 23 says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So in stage one of transformation, we must be changed from a sinner to a saint or to a child of God. We're going to look now in John chapter 3, verse 5 through 8. Verse 5 said, Jesus answered Nicodemus and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now what he's telling Nicodemus here is not going to heaven or entering into heaven, but he's talking about the church. We can't get in the church by just confessing the tenets of faith and raising our hand and say that I believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe that God raised him from the dead, and I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. But there is more. Many people don't preach this message, but in order to experience the stage one of transformation or be changed for the better, we have to be, must be, born again. He told Nicodemus that except a man is born of the water, that is one part of the transformation. And except he's born of the spirit, that is the second part of stage one of the transformation. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And in verse 6, he goes on and explains more to him about it because I believe that there's a lot of people who really don't know the true gospel of salvation. And in these days, when we are live streaming to many parts of the earth and many parts of the United States and of the world, I believe they need to know how to be saved. They need to know what is God's uh, gospel message for their salvation. We have so many churches that are just accepting people as members, but in order to get into God's church and in order to get into the place where he wants people to be, you must be born again of water and of spirit. Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. What Jesus is telling Nicodemus is that we are born a certain way. We are born with an Adamic nature. We are born with a sinful nature. Matter of fact, sin, hallelujah, spreads through the human family through birth, hallelujah. And if you're born of the flesh, you are flesh, and you think like flesh, and your mind is like flesh. And all your things that you're thinking about are not spiritual. They are carnal. They are fleshly. They are devilish. They are essential. Hallelujah. But when you get filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sin, then you get a spiritual mind that thinks about things in a different way. And the way we are when we are born, we cannot go to heaven like that. Hallelujah. We being able to do pretty good down here in the earth, we will be able to survive. 
But if you want to go to heaven, if you want to be with Jesus, if you want to be caught up to meet him in the air, if you want to be in the rapture, if you want to be in the presence and the glory of God, you must be, you've got to be born again. Verse 7, he said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, Nicodemus, ye must be born again. Hallelujah. Verse 8, he said, For the wind blow where it listeth, and how thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell from whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. On the day of Pentecost, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1, they were in the upper room. They were one accord in one place, waiting for the Holy Ghost. First of all, hallelujah, the Spirit appeared unto them. God's presence appeared unto them in cloven tongues like as a fire. And then there was a wind that came in, a rushing mighty wind, and filled all the house where they were sitting. And I saw this happen one time. I was looking at the trees, and I could see the wind blowing the trees, but I couldn't see uh, what the wind looked like. <laughs> but I could see the effect of it because I knew the wind was blowing because the trees were bowing down and the leaves were turning upside down. Hallelujah. Because the wind was blowing. You can hear the sound of the wind. It has a certain sound. Hallelujah. But you can't tell which direction it comes from and which direction it goes unless you have some meters or some instruments like the weather people have. Hallelujah. And Jesus said unto him, Hallelujah, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. We need to be born again. If we are not born again, we, am, we will never be changed. Hallelujah. And if we don't change from flesh to spirit, we will never see God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will not see him in peace. We will see him in his wrath. Acts 2 and 37 and 38. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now this is interesting because Peter and the other apostles knew what Jesus said. But instead of saying what he said, Peter said to them, Repent, in verse 38, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But what he told them to do was the same thing that Jesus told Nicodemus that he would have to do in order to enter into the kingdom of God. They would need the water baptism in Jesus' precious name for the remission of sin. They would need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of God or the Spirit of Christ. Stage two of transformation is being changed from a newborn saint or a newborn child of God into a fully grown saint or child of God. Hallelujah. Now, this transformation, the first one that we talked about in stage one, can be accomplished within, uh, if you're ready, within 15 or 20 minutes in the baptismal pool. But this one is the one that all of us actually are working on right now. 
because even if you trace it in childhood development and adulthood and all of the studies that they have uh, that you can look at, this one takes a lot of time to accomplish. Hallelujah. Now he said, well, Elder, it don't sound like it's too bad, but it does. It takes time to grow in the Lord. It takes time to change for the better. Hallelujah. And when we look in our scripture text, this is the scripture for this particular stage two. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 13, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Amen. He's talking about Moses' law, and he's talking about grace, grace and truth. Moses went up into the mountain and was with God 40 days and 40 nights. And when he came down, out of the mountain, his face was glowing with, amen, the light and the Shekinah glory that his skin had absorbed just by being in the presence of God. His face shined so brightly that he had to put a veil over it or he put a mask over it so that the people could look upon him. When he went into the tabernacle, he took the mask off. But when he came out, he put the mask back on because the people were afraid of him. They thought something really bad had happened to Moses. But it was, in short, it was just being in the presence of the Lord caused that to happen. Hallelujah. God's Shekinah glory made him glow. He had a glow, he had a light about him that made them afraid of him. And he would leave the mask on whenever he was around them because they were afraid of him. Hallelujah. And the writer Paul is telling the Corinthian people that that law or that error had been abolished. So Moses wearing a mask, Moses covering up his face, so the glory of the Lord would not shine out on the people, that has been abolished. In their minds, the minds of the Jews at this particular time have not accepted Christ as their Messiah Neither have they acknowledged the fact that he is their savior. Hallelujah. But their minds are blinded. Even until this day, there remaineth a veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil, that veil, is done away with in Christ. Amen. You, hallelujah, don't have to worry about getting scared of Jesus because there's no veil. He has a glory, but it is not something that will scare you, but it's something that will transform you and me into the people that he wants us to be. I believe that Jesus Christ had many things in mind. God had many things in mind when he prepared himself a body to save us, to bring us out of sin, to bring us out of the flesh, to bring us out to a place where we could be transformed and made like he wanted us to be. Hallelujah. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is still upon their hearts. They are still reading the five books of the Pentateuch, and they're still practicing the ceremonies, the new moons, the Sabbath, the special days, 
and all those things that are in the ceremonial law. When Jesus has come to set us free and to give us salvation through his name. Verse 16, nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken off. Whenever Israel turns to the Lord and finally accepts him as their Messiah, then the veil or that part that blocks off them from seeing the glory of the Lord will be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. But we all, the whole church, with open face beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should be making changes every year for the better, not, hallelujah, not getting worse and worse and worse, but we should be getting better and better and better. Hallelujah. And when we look, hallelujah, into the Word of God and we see ourselves in the mirror of God, we should not see us, but we should see the Lord. Hallelujah. We should be more kind and more gentle, more long-suffering, more patient, more humble. Hallelujah. We should have Christ living in us so much so that people know that we're saved. Do they know we're saved? Hallelujah. Do they know that we love Jesus? Do they know that Jesus has took our sins away? Do they know that we have his spirit living in us? Hallelujah. Have they been able to see Jesus Christ in our lives? Hallelujah. That's the thing that we want to preach about today. We need to make a change for a better. Don't play games. Don't play like you saved and you ain't saved. Don't play like you know God and you don't know God. But you have to know him and you have to be changed from glory to glory. Now this scripture is not on the board because I didn't give it to the technicians. But look it up yourself. It's in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 22 through 26. And it said, Be ye doers, doers of the word, and not hearers only. He said, when you hear the word, even when I'm preaching today, make a change for a better. Hallelujah. When the word comes to you, hallelujah, through the anointing of the Holy Ghost, make a change for the better. Hallelujah. And he said it's like looking in a glass and we see what manner of people that we are and we walk away from the mirror and we forget what we saw in the mirror. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. If you look in the mirror, you should see Jesus. <laughs> you should see Christ's attributes and his profile should be what you see in the mirror. It is a reflection of him in you, hallelujah, living and making changes in your life for the better. That's James chapter 1, verse 22 through 26. And God ordained or foreknew us even before we were born. Romans 8 and 29. And he predestined us to be conformed to the image of his Son and that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, you might look like your dad or your mom. 
You might have ways like them. You might have features like them. But the one we really, really want to look like is Jesus. <laughs> Amen. We want to have his mind. We want to have his personality. We want to have his profile. Amen. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus on earth, I long to be like him. All through life's journey from earth to glory, oh Lord, I want to be like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Transformation. Stage two of transformation is from the time that you receive salvation until a time of the rapture of the church out of the earth. We should constantly, every year, not just 20 and 21, but every year that we're saved, we should be in a better place spiritually than we were the year before. Hallelujah. We should not still be dragging our feet. We should not still be struggling with certain things. Certain things should be overcome by the time you've been saved 10 or 15 years. If you've been saved 30 years, you should really know, and I should really know, something about Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah. People should be able to look at us and talk to us and communicate with us and find within our DNA and within our way that we talk and the way that we act and the things that we do is different, hallelujah, from that which is in the world. But, hallelujah, we are acting like, talking like, thinking like, living like Jesus Christ. We have already heard his word. We have read his word. We have seen his word. Hallelujah. And we want to be like him. Hallelujah. Stage three of our transformation is change from a fleshly body to a glorified body. Amen. Now, this is the one, what we call the rapture. This is called the rapture of the child of God. And there will be a change that will take place at that time. These vile bodies, these cantankerous bodies, these hurting bodies, these suffering bodies, these weak bodies will be changed to transformation and we will be given a glorious body. Philippians 3 and 20 and 21 said, for our conversation is in heaven. From whence we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the word conversation is not what I'm doing now, talking to you from the word of the Lord, but it goes further than that. Our manner of life, our conduct, what we say, what we do, how we act, Hallelujah. How we feel, where we go, who we go with, hallelujah, are all part of our conversation. It is matter of life, and it is conduct. Now, our affections, uh, I know this is a kind of touchy subject, but our affection should be on things that are in heaven, not upon things that's in the earth. Amen. Now I said, brother preacher, it's nice to have nice things. It is. 
But even if you have something, even if God has blessed you to have something, do not set your affection on things that are in the earth, but on things that are reserved in heaven for the transformed child of God. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to come. We're looking for him to come from heaven, just like he ascended off of Mount Olive in Acts chapter 1 and verse 9. We're looking for him. We, we have that blessed hope that one day we will see his appearing. Hallelujah. And when he comes, when he comes, this is recorded in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. When he comes, he will descend from heaven with the voice of an archangel and a trump of God. Hallelujah. And they who have died in the Lord before us, he will bring with him. Hallelujah. And the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible. Hallelujah. This corruptible body will put on incorruption. This mortal body will put on immortality. Hallelujah. And we will be fashioned, or we will receive a glorious body at the same time. And those that are Dead will not prevent those that are living, or those that are living will not prevent those that are dead, but we will all be caught up to meet him in the air. Philippians 3.21, Who shall change our vile body or our fleshly body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. The old people used to sing a song, I looked at my hands, and they looked new, and I looked at my feet, and they did too. And ever since that wonderful day, my soul's been satisfied. They're talking about salvation, but I'm talking about a glorious body. Hallelujah. A body that is different from the one we have. This body that we have is made out of clay. And the only thing that's holding it together and making it work as well as it does, is the Spirit of the Lord or the breath of the Lord that he has given to the human family. I said one time in a message that we weren't nothing but dirt. <laughs> and I hope I didn't offend anybody, but we are. We are clay vessels. We have this wonderful treasure of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, down on the inside of our soul, but we are made of clay, hallelujah. And God predestined that we would be conformed to the image of his Son. In other words, we would look like Jesus, and we would carry or would be clothed with the righteousness of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so he made us and wants us to be made better by, hallelujah, becoming or walking or putting upon ourselves, amen, the image of his son. And moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. He called us for that purpose. And whom he called, them he also justified. He took our sins away and made us 
free of guilt before the Lord. And whom he called, he also justified, and whom he justified, he also glorified. There is a glory that is waiting for the people of God who serve him, who do what the Lord has told them to do. Hallelujah. We're waiting for the Lord to come from heaven and change our vile bodies that we might be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. 1 John 3 and 2 said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. It's even too glorious to even think about or even being able to describe by, hallelujah, a human being what that will be like, hallelujah. When we come face to face with Jesus, hallelujah, our vile body, our fleshly body will be transformed. It will be changed and made like unto his glorious body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you want to get that good old body that don't get tired no more? <laughs> Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad anymore. You don't have to do special things for it because it has the righteousness of God. It is a spiritual body that looks exactly like Jesus. Hallelujah. Finally, in my conclusion, we want to make everybody, all of us, wants to make a change for the better. We're going to have, beginning next Sunday through the following Sunday, we're going to have eight days of prayer and fastings for personal consecration. I know this is a message that is going out live streaming, but I want to tell you with, with my own lips what we are planning to do this fast is not for the new president or the vice president. It is not for this pandemic of the COVID-19. It is not for the economic situation. But we hope and pray that all of our members of our church who see this telecast will want to make a change for the better. Hallelujah. I think or I feel, I really feel, that we need to be fortified against the adversary who is trying to destroy us. Hallelujah. Not the COVID-19. That's destroying a lot of people. Bad economy, destroying a lot of people. And there are white supremacists and people even right now that want to destroy a lot of people. Hallelujah. But I'm talking about damnation of the soul. I'm talking about losing what we've already gained or not being able to complete our walk with God if we don't make a change. There has to be a change made because the forces and powers of darkness are so strong against the people of God right now, if we don't make a change for the better, it's not going to get better for us. Hallelujah. We need to be stronger. We need to be made, transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So a brother, teacher, 
Pastor, how are we going to do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Hallelujah. Because there is a way for us to make a change for the better. Hallelujah. It's found in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And it reads, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may be able to prove, prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Now, what that means, and I'm coming down to the close of the message, but what that means is we cannot be like the world or pattern our life like the world and survive. Hallelujah. We must live like Jesus, act like Jesus, make Jesus our role model, make Jesus the one that we want to be like him. Hallelujah. In order to survive. In order to be transformed, or in order to be changed, hallelujah, or even, or even to be made better, we need to set spiritual goals for ourselves in 20 and 21, hallelujah. I don't want to be weak. I don't want to be weak spiritually. I don't want to be wishy-washy. I don't want to be influenced by the things that I feel in my mind and in my body and in my heart. Hallelujah. But I want to survive even in a time like this. The word conform means do not be made in the pattern of the world or the way of the world, but be transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word transform means to be changed in condition, nature, and function. It also means to be changed in form or of appearance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Purpose in your heart. Don't let all this other stuff blind your mind to the doctrine of transformation. Even though it is a bad time, even though it's an evil time, we must be transformed into the image of God's Son. Hallelujah. In 2021, purpose in your heart, I'm going to make a change for the better. <laughs> we cannot remain the same in our Christian journey, we must always be moving forward, changing for the better as we go. We must change the spiritual condition of our life. If it's poor or if it's kind of weak, we need to make it stronger. Our spiritual mind is not just renewed on in January of each year during personal consecration, but it should be renewed daily. There are things that's working on our minds right now that we need to get rid of. Hallelujah. We need to, we need to throw them away and grab something else that is more uh, in line with what God wants us to do. Instead of thinking about carnal things and fleshy things, we need to be thinking about spiritual things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if we don't fast, we won't last. And if we don't pray, uh, we're not going to stay. Hallelujah. It's just that critical right now. There's a battle going on. There's a warfare that is going on that must be, must be overcome so that the child of God 
can finish the process or doctrine of doctrine from stage one through stage two and go all the way to stage three. May the Lord bless us this coming week and the week of the 24th. May he bless us. May we be able to do, amen, what the Lord wants us to do. And when we are finished, we will be better, 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 better children of God. Hallelujah. Keep on making a change for the better. Father God, we bow before you and thank you for this message. You gave it to us and we gave it to them. And we pray that you remember all of the saints of God. Help them, O oh God, to purpose in their heart. I'm going to strive. I'm going to work. I'm going to work on me and make my life more better spiritually. I'm going to renew the spirit of my mind, hallelujah, so that I may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We commend our church into your hands. We commend all of those who I'm looking at, at preaching to today. We commend them into your hands as well. And bless the words of your servant. Do not let them fall to the ground, but let them bring fruit, forth fruit to the glory and honor of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen.